Okay, hi everyone. We're going to work on uh, inequalities, so let's get started. Uh, let's, if you remember inequalities, were greater than, less than, greater than equals to, or less than or equals to. Okay, And we did this way back when, when it came to the number lines. If I said x is greater than 3 on a simple number line, a one-dimensional number line, here's 0 and here's 3. We said this was hollow or solid. We said this guy was hollow at 3. So we do a hollow mark at 3. And x's can be bigger, right? This is bigger than 3. So all numbers bigger than 3, we went to the right. If we said x was, I say, less than or equal to 3, now any number less than 3, here's 3 again. Let's say numbers like 1, 2, and 0, right? All these types of numbers are all less than, are all less than 3. These are all okay, and we would use this as a solid dot, and we, anything less than 3 was okay. Okay, so that's what we did when we were looking at the one-dimensional space, when there's only one variable. Now, if we're graphing in two-dimensional, so two-dimensional x and y now, They gave you the problem y is greater than 2x plus 1. Okay, so this is similar, similar to y is equal to 2x plus 1. Very similar to it, except when we switch it to an inequality, it is a region of space now. It's just not answers on the line. So let's compare these two graphs here. We can graph them side by side and see what's the difference between them once again. We have y is equal to, let's look at the right side first, mx plus b. So our b value is 1, so we always start off at this one value right here. That's 1. And we said our m is our slope. m is 2, that's our slope. And that reminds us that's rise over run. So that's m over 1, so 2 over 1. So we're going to rise up 2, 1, 2 over 1. Now what we're saying here is that all these answers on this line are going to make this a statement true. So the first point here is 0, 1. If I plug in 0, 1, 2 times 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. If x is 0, y is 1. Hey, that worked. Let's go ahead and try another point. This point here looks like it's going to be 1, 3. Right? That's a point on the line. Right? I rose up 2 and over 1, so that's 1, 3. So if I plug in 2 times 1, plus 1, that's 3. Yes, and x and y, that's another point on this line. So when we say equals, all these points on the line are equal to whatever x value I plug in. That's the y value. But on my left-hand side, when it comes to inequalities, this is a region of answers. There's more than one answer that works for us. Because just like before, we looked up here, it's not just that the dot is the answer, it's the arrow, everything else this arrow covers. And in the real world, that's really how we talk. We don't say, come to my house exactly at 3 o'clock. We say, hey, I'll be home after 3. I'll be home before 3. You can come visit me after 3. That means 4, 5, 6, 3.30, 3.01, 3.45, o'clock. That's okay. I'll be there after 3. So in many cases, we use this idea of inequalities to say, hey, it's more than it, more is better or less is better. Like some people say, hey, I want to, I want to, I want to make a lot of money. How much money do you want to make? I want to make over a hundred thousand. You notice it just say, I want to make exactly 100,000. Okay. So let's take a look at this inequality graph on the left. We're still looking at M X plus B. We're still graphing M X plus B. So my b value is 1, and the slope, as we mentioned before, is 2, right? That's 2. So rise 1, 2 over 1, right? Very similar to what we drew on the right, except we're going to include a couple of notes. First, this is an inequality, so it's going to be a region, and also it's strictly greater than. It's not equal, okay? So first thing is not equal. 
to the line. So we can't be touching the line. It's like, again, in basketball, where the line, if you touch the line, you're out. So you're not allowed to play on the line. It just, a, in a sense, an invisible border. So here's our invisible border. If we had wrote y is greater than or equal to, we would have graphed a solid line. Okay, that was in solid. Now here's the next part, and I tried to make it easy last time. So how, which way do we know to shade? Are we going to shade since y is greater? Remember, y's are, these are your y's, right? These are your y's. So when I say y is greater than the line, what am I going to shade? Am I going to shade above the line or below the line? And really, this is just basic English here. If I say y is greater, we're looking at y is greater than the line. So that's above the line. And one way you could do that is you could just put your pen on the line and say y is greater. Hey, y is greater, that means we go up. Y is greater, that means we go up. Y is greater, that means we go up. So we have done this before, and there was an IXL activity that we had for homework. So if you want, you can take a look at that again. Um, but it's something that we did before. Let's draw. Let's try this one more time. Y is less than or equal to one half x plus one. Okay, very similar to a graph that we just did before. Like okay, so our y-intercept. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, y-intercept is one. Put a dot at one, and the slope is one half. So rise one, run two. Now, you can see here that since the inequality is less than or equal to, or equal to, that means it's a solid line. Okay, so we're going to graph this line with a solid line. And the follow-up is, hey, it's inequality, so we have to shade in one direction or the other. We have to pick a side. Okay, we have to pick a side. So what side would we pick here? y is less than so here is again the hint put your pencil on the graph and if i say y is less than isn't y less than going down isn't y less than going down and if i can draw an infinitely many set of these arrows it just looks like a shading on the bottom now in ixl it's going to be that easy except you don't have to shade you just have to pick a side ixl will just let you pick a side so you save a lot of time here All right, so here's our next issue is that today we're doing a system of inequalities. So we're going to draw two inequalities. So let's mix these two inequalities up. We're going to say, hey, system of inequalities. That means more than one. More than one. And I'm going to, we're going to draw the two that we just did. We said y is greater than um, 2x plus 1. And we also said y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 1. Okay. So we have two lines that we're going to draw. And we're going to figure out in what area is it good for both of them. Now you can almost think of this like your parents. We talked about a system of equations before, like your family making a decision. Where do you want to eat for dinner? Okay, so eventually you guys have overlapping, uh, overlapping ideas, and that's kind of like the one that we're gonna stick to. I'm okay with Chinese. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm okay with Chinese. Let's go get Chinese then. So that's what we're gonna end up looking at. And in this case, here we go. This is the new part of today's lesson. We're gonna graph two of these graphs together, and then make a decision where to shade. So let's go ahead and graph these two lines on this. So y equals to m x plus b, y equals to m x plus b. Let's go ahead and graph those two. My y intercept is here's my one. And so for well, you know let me change the colors. We'll use. You guys don't need a copy. I'm just going to change it on my side. Y. 
y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 1, right? So we'll have one in red and one in blue. Okay, so here's a blue one. Uh, our slope is 2, 1, 2. My rise is, my rise is 2 over run is 1. Okay, and this, we said this was a dotted line, everyone, okay? Make sure you do draw a dotted line here. Why is it dotted? Because the inequality is greater than. No equal sign. Let's graph the second line on the same graph. I'll use red this time. The y-intercept is 1, and the slope is up 1 over 2. And this is a solid line. Okay, we said this was less than or equal to. Now, it's hard to see because of our, our overlapping lines, but let me just erase those for a moment. You can see that there are actually four regions. There's 1, 2, three, four. Okay, there are four regions here. We have to pick one of these four regions that would be true for both equations. And what I, why, why am I picking only four here? It's because one of these regions is going to be greater than and less than at the same time. So let's go ahead and shade it and figure out which region is true for both of them. Now, Cheating is a is a type of a tool that we use, right, to figure it out. Uh, I'm going to say, hey, if you don't want to shade all of two regions, you can just think of it. Give yourself some time to think about it, and you can actually pick it without it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to say y is greater than the first line. Okay, here, y is greater. So y is greater. We're all above. Take a look here. We're all above my first line. Okay? We're all above my first line. Of course, this comes all the way down, right? This goes all the way around here, okay? They're all into it, okay? Let me do this one. Right. We are greater than the line. This goes all the way to the edge. All the way to the edge. Okay, the red is less than, isn't it? So we're underneath right here. See, we're all less than right here. Take a look, everyone. You can see very clearly now there is one portion of our four original possibilities that was double shaded, which is true for both these lines. These inequalities is true for both. And can you guys all see that in one section it's actually darker than the rest? In this section here, it totally overlaps. And that's the point in IXL that you're going to pick. And this is the place that's true for both of these statements. What I mean is any point that you pick, any point that you pick in this shaded area is going to be true for both equations. Now that, let's try one. Let's just kind of look at here. Let's say it will be like negative 3 and maybe negative... Uh, 2 maybe? Let's try negative 3, negative 2. So let's see a point that looks like negative 3, ne uh, negative 3, negative 1 maybe. That looks like even better. Oh, I hope so. Okay. Negative 3, negative 1. So I want to plug in just to check. And now this is an x, x activity you guys are going to be doing. We're going to check is negative 3, comma, negative 1 an answer to y is greater than 2x plus 1 and y is less than or equal to 1 over 2x plus 1. Is this going to be a true statement? So let's go ahead and plug in NC. So we have x's and y's. Here's my x and my y. We're going to plug that into our problem. So we have negative 1 is greater than 2 times negative 3 plus 1. Is this going to be true? We're just plugging in, right? We plug in our y and we plug in our x. Over here, y is negative 1. Oops. Negative 1 is less than or equal to 1 half negative 3 negative 3 plus 1. Okay, we'll see these are two true statements still. Okay, so we have negative 1 here is greater than a negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Is this still a true statement? Is negative 5 smaller than negative 1? Yes, 
true. Because negative 5 is still less than negative 5. So that statement, that point is totally valid for my first equation. That's even valid for my, for my second equation. Negative 1 is less than or equal to, let's see, negative 3 over 2 is negative 3 over 2 plus 1 is going to take us a little bit more work here. This is 2 over 2, right? Making change. So that's negative 1 half. Is negative 1 more negative than negative 1 half? And yes, this is also true. Okay, so this point that I picked is totally true for both these statements. And that's, that's our goal, is to find is that point going to be true for both the statements. Now, are any of these skills new to us? The answer is no. We've actually practiced all these skills already. We've practiced graphing. We've cra practiced shading the inequality. We've also practiced checking points. But this time, we're just going to we're going to be checking two points. Now, let's do this one more time as an example, and then we'll look at the IXL. We do have a short day, so I'm trying to get this done. So if I say y is equal to, um, let's say, uh, negative one half x, let's do plus one again. And well, this sum will do y is, sorry, less than or equal to, less than or equal to, and greater than uh, x minus 1. Okay, so let's graph these two on the same plane. y is greater than x uh, minus 1. Okay, graphing them on the same plane. The blue one, the y-intercept is 1, and the slope is negative 1 over 2. And if you take a look, solid or dotted, solid or dotted, that is a less than or equal to. So that's going to be solid, because we have an equal sign there. Let's go to graph the second equation. y is greater than x minus 1, so negative 1 is down here negative 1, and the slope is 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And then we have a dotted line. So there's a lot of little tiny nuances you got to really make sure you pay attention to. Is it solid or is it dotted? All right, what's the slope? What's the y-intercept? Now, which way do we shade? Now, here is something I'm going to teach you guys. And this, I think, is the easiest way for a lot of kids who get confused with too much shading. So if you like shading, go ahead and please do the shading now and figure out which of the four, one, two, three, four sections here, which of these four sections is the final shading area? Okay, which of the four sections is the final shading area? But I want to teach you guys a one way to figure out which of the four is true without really making a mess and spending a lot of time. So here's what we're going to do. I'll do this in green. If you look here, y is less than my blue equation, right? So it's going to be less than here and less than here. That's it. I just draw two arrows. That's it. Take a look here. I picked an arrow on this side and a pair on this side. Why? Because this line cut it in half. So I just drew an arrow on both sides saying, hey, y is less than. That means we're going down. Like, pay attention. This is actually like the easiest way, I think. Just draw an arrow. You can draw arrows everywhere if you want. But I think that's, again, too much work. Where do I need the arrow? I don't know if it's going to be on the left side or the right side. That's it. So I just draw arrows on both those sides. Let's take a look at my second equation here. Okay, I'm actually, let me use uh, blue arrows. Okay, it's going to be here or here. Now, looking at the red equation, y is greater than x minus 1. Hey, greater than that means y is greater. So we're going to be above here, above and above. So you can see which section actually is kind of busy. Look first at the least busy section. If you look right here, there are no arrows going on, right? So for sure, this is not a true statement. This is true for nobody. Nobody wants to be in that area. If you look up here, only the red was in it. So that's not a double. Looking down here, only the blue Okay, so that's not double. But if you notice on the left here, 
Hey, they're both shaded, aren't they? Arrows both overlapped, and that's actually our region. So you would be shading in this area here. So let's go take a look at your IXL work today. So your IXL work, we're working on two parts. We're working on T5 and T6. T5 first, you guys are going to check if the answer, that's a 310 here, is a solution for the system. So what we do is we just plug in 3 and 10. X is 3, X is 3, Y is 10, Y is 10 is 10 less than 21 plus 5 is 10 greater than 3 plus 7 greater than or equal to if you take a look here i in my in my brain when you're copying just go ahead and just plug it in 3 times 7 is 21 3 times 1 is just 3 and let's see if this is true 10 is less than 26 oops i just changed color 10 is less than 26? Yes, that is true. How about the second statement? 10 is greater than or equal to 10. 3 plus 7 is 10. Is that true? Yes. So that means 3, 10 is true. Yes, it's true is a solution for the system of inequalities. That's it. That's, that's what you're going to check. Because this one here does fall in the shaded area. Now, if I went ahead and drew this real quick, just um, just very quickly, y is equal to 7x plus 5. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we have this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 over 1. You can see this oh, This is a, a dotted line, right? And then if I go draw the second one, you guys don't have to draw this, but I'm just drawing it really quick to show you guys. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's 7. And the slope is positive 1 over 1, 1 over 1. Okay, here's my, my next graph up here. And my point they're checking is 3, 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Here's 10. Okay. And the shaded area would be everyone down here and everyone up here. Where's the double shade? The double shade happens in this corner here. And it turns out 310 fits right on that line in that shaded region. Okay. But you can see graphing takes up so much more time if I'm trying to verify it. But if I could just plug in the solution into my answer, perfect. And that's what we're checking for. Now, this, all the questions will be similar to that. You're going to go and plug it in to see if that still gives you a true statement. You can see here, now it's X and Y. This is in standard form. Okay, if I plug in 5 and 4, 5 and 4, that's 10 plus 8 is greater than 18. And 5 plus, sorry, 5 plus 4 is 9. 5 plus 4 is less than 10. Is it true that 18 is greater than 18? Is it true that 10, sorry, 9 is less than 10? This is true here, but this is not true because 18 is not greater than 18. So this is not a solution. Okay. If this was greater than or equal to, sure, that would have been true. But if it's 18 is greater than 18, that is not true. Okay, let's do give me one more minute folks uh, last part is graphing a system of equations okay solving a system of inequalities uh, from the graph so in this case we're graphing straight lines so if x is greater than negative 5 okay let's go find x is negative 5 x is negative 5 right here and it's going to be a vertical line oops it's going to be a vertical line here and solid or dotted the way you can do that is by tapping the line again. If you see, I can make the line flash. So since it's x is greater than negative 5, we're going to make it a solid line. Our next one is graph the y. y is greater than 5. Here's y is 5. 
and y is greater than 5 specifically it's dotted now in what whoops come on all right so now we have to pick a shade where are we going to shade are we going to shade here 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 or here which of these four would make this a true statement okay so that's first try to figure out the first part x is greater than negative 5 so greater than the negative 5 wouldn't that be on the right side of this marker now of these two possibilities right you guys can see these two possibilities which of these two possibilities is y is greater than a uh, y is greater than 5 of these two possibilities only this section here is y is greater than 5 right y is greater than 5 in these two sections so the double sheet happens here let me make some notes for you guys not only is are we greater than negative 5 we're also greater than y is 5 and you can see in this corner here it's double shaded with both inequalities Now this is a type of question that you might see on the SAT. You might see this type of question, um, of course, on the standardized testing, or whenever they're trying to test if you can uh, know how to shade a system of inequalities. Now in Algebra 2, you'll be faced with three or four, even five lines, and you have to figure out which region would be uh, the answer. Okay, let's go ahead and say yes, submit. Fantastic, yes. Um, this one here is y and y. Okay, this one's just y and y. Fine, let's do y and y y is negative one here's negative one oops negative one that's y is negative one it's going to be a dotted line folks why because uh, it's less than only the second one is y is greater than negative seven negative seven is way down here careful that's negative seven some of you guys might have picked up here with that and that's negative five but negative seven is down here and that's going to be solid because y is greater than negative seven now how would we shade we're looking at less than, right? Aren't we less than negative one, but yet greater than negative seven? Okay, so we're stuck actually between, we're stuck between these two graphs because one side says less than negative one and the other one says greater than, greater than negative seven. So we are double shading right between them all. Now, as you can see, we're going to look at some other equations, and it's just back to our graphing lines again. And this is something that we, we just did recently, and in the, let's see, I'm going to try to get to the harder ones. In this one here, you have to rewrite the equation so it's slope-intercept form. Okay, if you write in slope-intercept form, it's a lot easier to graph. I'll do this one for the second equation here. We have 3x plus y is less than 4. Remember, we're solving for y. So you minus 3x to both sides. So y is less than negative 3x plus 4. And then we would graph this. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1, 2, 3 over 1. And this is a dotted line. Okay, so the last problems will be a little bit more work. But it's great practice because we've done solving for one variable. We've done uh, graphing in standard form, changing it to slope-intercept form. So this is a great review also. And then since we're shading down, we're going to be shading underneath it. Okay, super important skill to have. You, The standardized test always tests you on stuff like this.